All right, all right, so this video is on Pokemon Unbound. And I'm still bending my rules on this a little bit because the game is not yet 100% out. They're still working on a bit of the post-game content. And don't worry, I will do a much fuller and in-depth video on it, but for right now, I think you all should play Pokemon Unbound. See, Pokemon Unbound is an extremely in-depth ROM hack of Pokemon Fire Red, and it's that good. It's on the level that some modders would call a total conversion of the game, and is closer to a fan game and execution. It is, however, still running on the Fire Red engine, just heavily modified and changed to such an extreme degree. And as I've stated before, I do want to come back to this once the rest of the post-game stuff is added in, but I've been having enough fun with this that I've just wanted to make a quick little video on it. Okay, before we go on though, I do want to address one thing that's more of the result of my own recklessness. I recorded this all using New Game Plus, hence why you see me with Legendaries, as, well, you do get to take your party over. While New Game Plus isn't in the release post, the legendaries are, and I more wanted to keep things moving with as little cutscenes as possible. With that out of the way, let's get into why this thing is so impressive. Now, I know I'm starting a little bit weirdly, but I kind of want to get the technical stuff out of the way first. And I am going to keep it quite simple for the sake of, well, the average viewer. I know not everybody watching is going to be a massive tech dork like me, so... But the thing is, Game Freak's never been good at coding, like, ever. It's why the background footage is of a different game right now, because this shit goes way far back. Even with a game like Pulseman for the Genesis, a 2D platformer of all things that isn't the most extremely paced. It's striking, it's pretty, it plays good, but it chugs to no end. In fact, I think the only Game Freak game that has run both stably and smoothly is Jelly Boy 2, the unreleased game. And that's definitely not to say that any of these games are bad. I enjoy Pulse Man. I enjoy the old Pokemon games, which yes, we're going to talk about the old Pokemon games and how unstable they are. But to give credit where credit is due, all of the upcoming footage is from... Evie? Evie? Regardless, everything comes from her channel because it would take too much time to set all of this up, but I implore you all to go check it out at some point. But the older Pokemon games especially are notorious for being extremely poorly coded. And I'm talking to the point where glitches and broken mechanics are still being found today, like decades later. Most of what you're seeing here, for example, is called arbitrary code execution, which is using a table of contents of sort in order to generate code that is then executed using, well, an executor. Usually such a thing is along the lines of a glitched item that doesn't even exist in the game normally, or a mechanic that wasn't exactly coded the best and has some... gaping flaws, shall we say. Granted, a large chunk of Pokémon past Generation 3 is kind of infamous for, well, not running at 60 frames per second the whole time, as well as cut corners. While that nightmarish can of worms of crunching and AAA production time and so forth is... a video for another day. The point to go into here is that Game Freak games have never been the most stably coded, especially Pokémon games. However, this lets me segue into why the engine upgrade this hack uses is so impressive. See, this hack was made by the person who made the engine overhaul themselves and you've been seeing their name in the now playing bits, which is how they signed off their soundtrack with. As you can see from the presently playing footage, stuff like the Generation 4 digging minigame is in this hack. Which is honestly really cool to see, even if it's a bit weird hearing it with fire red sound effects. However, that is not the most impressive minigame this adds. For that, I need to introduce you all to Altaria Cloudburst, a completely new minigame for Pokémon Unbound, located in the game's Game Corner. I don't think I need to go into why this is impressive with its Mode 7 style scaling and rotation, but I will admit that there is one little nitpick I have in that Altaria's hitbox is kind of tiny. But again, this one was a really pleasant surprise and I wasn't expecting this in the game at all. I also have to mention the audio. 
The driver has been tweaked to use more samples as well as higher quality samples and appears to have been optimized for MGBA's high quality audio feature. In layman's terms, this is essentially a means of bypassing the GBA's terrible, 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 terrible audio output, with the music itself at its worst being pleasant but inoffensive, and at its best absolutely slapping. I don't want to pad this out too much, but I'll add a couple of samples here for you all to listen to, in addition to everything that's been playing in the background so far. And I'll be blunt, if we spent more time on the music, we'd probably be here for a lot longer. So let's move on to the bits of game balance and story writing that I can actually talk about without spoiling stuff. So obviously, if the game didn't play well, I wouldn't be discussing it. On the other hand, there's only so much I can get into without going into spoiler territory, and this video already assumes that you've at least played one Pokémon game. So let's start with how Unbound handles starters and the early game. The starter trio for Unbound is Larvitar, Guybel, and Belbul. In addition, your starters start at level 10, and while that may seem strange, hear me out for a second. See, by making the starters start at level 10, it skips one infuriating part of the early game. The tackle fight. You know, the... You know this slog at the beginning of every single Pokémon game ever. The addition of a third move to a Pokémon's roster right at the start, or just a stronger move in general, kinda makes the tackle battle not a thing here. You also get Pokéballs a lot faster than the Pokéball norm, thus allowing you to add more Pokémon to your party and diversifying things up even faster than standard. In addition, there's a lot of quality of life things, such as, for example, being able to hold R and A in order to speed through cutscenes. How very Super Robot Wars of them. Unfortunately, I would consider most of the things done with battles a bit spoilery, but I think I could get away with saying that they're really fun concepts I don't think I've ever seen in a Pokémon game. However, there is a little bit of what I have to call ROM hack writing. ROM hack writing is what I call instances where the franchise and the writing of the fan work feels a bit dissonant. It just has parts or an entirety that just doesn't mesh well together at all. For example, you've got your generic put X, Y, and Z colorful cartoon character in hell and make them fight demons. Or perhaps an example that I refuse to recall. Stuff like... Pokemon Snake Wood. A post zombie apocalypse Pokemon ROM hack. Ugh. Pokemon Unbound has some pretty weird ideas, but they fall into one of two categories. The first is you'll be fine with this if you were fine with Generation 5, 6, and the original release of Generation 7's plot. I say this because I know some people especially don't like the higher stakes seriousness of Generation 5 and onward, at least until A just completely throws it away, for the most part. The second category is, this is out of place, but it's funny enough that I'll let it slide. I know it's subjective, but honestly, when I ran into these parts of the lore, yeah, I just laughed. In that laughing with it, not at it way. But now for the big question. Why am I doing a video like this? Well, for one reason, which I will reiterate in the next video, I like supporting good fan works. I know it's a double-edged sword given how trigger-happy Ninty's lawyers are, but... Pokémon Unbound does use one of the two patch formats that is designed to be far more copyright-friendly by only containing the modifications to the code. But as for the case for covering a fan work itself, well, 
when you're doing something with an established franchise, you're in a bigger seat. The creator is, in a sense, inadvertently vying and competing with all of the other fan works. And even if they don't entirely need a hand, well, it's good to bring attention to good products you think that your base might enjoy. And in this case, Pokemon Unbound is well worth bending my own rules for. It is extremely polished, and the main campaign is entirely finished. There's just a little bit of the post-game campaign left. It's also pretty meaty, so you'll definitely have a good chunk of hours in it, especially if you replay it on higher difficulties. So yeah, that's my reasoning. And yes, the next video will be another fan work. So I think I'll sign off here and just wait for the last few little bits and pieces to be added to Pokemon Unbound. I'll see you all in the next video, and I genuinely hope you give this one a try.